So I have so many different bins for different projects. I have um, some embroidery things going. I have gold leaf stuff to gold leaf projects and I've got uh, some little fabrics here, ribbons, and I had to remember what container um, had what I had seen that I can use for this project. Then I remembered that I was organizing some old family photos and kept them in this bin here. And let me show you from the top down. It had stuff in it, so it kind of hid this. But on the very bottom is this honeycomb and it's bigger. You can see it in relationship to the size of my hand and they, you can feel it. So that means that I can make a mold of it and I'm going to do what I can picture in my mind right now is a hybrid of using some of this and some bubble wrap to have two different sizes of hexagons to make my soap top. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So first of all, I'm going to break into my stash of plasticine clay. And plasticine clay is that type of clay that does not solidify. You can continue to mold it. And it's really useful for molding projects. Um, it takes some work to get it to be really pliable again, but not too much work. And I only need a little bit of this. So you, I'll bring you back to my tray, my container that I'm going to use the impression to make this honeycomb look for my soap. So all I'm going to do is make some snakes with this clay. I have my ruler also. I want it big enough to fit into my 11 inch mold. So it's big enough and I'm going to make it about three and a quarter inches wide. I should make it a little bit larger because this silicone that I'm going to be pouring into this mold is going to be very thin which means I can cut it to fit. So I'd rather have it too big than too small. I also don't have to worry about super straight edges because I can cut it really straight after it's done. So that's plenty big enough. So I'm just going to press this with my fingers onto the surface. It's sticky enough so it holds to that surface really well too. I want to make sure that there's no air gaps underneath this because I want the liquid silicone to stay in this, this well. I don't want it to leak out. And this is only about, it's not even a half inch high because again, I'm only going to pour enough to make a really thin impression mat. So let's see here, three and a quarter maybe make this three and a half. So I'm working on my second snake here. And do I know if this is going to work? I have a pretty good idea that this is going to work, although I am experimenting. I've made a lot of silicone impression molds, but I haven't made one like this. This I think is even easier than the other things I've made. Can look back at my video on making voodoo soaps because I made the whole uh, voodoo mold using silicone. So let's take a measure again three and a half. I'll bring it right about there. Again, three and a half is more than I need but I'll trim it down later. And I'm going to make this slightly over 11 inches too. So let me put that right there. Make a little cut marks.
I'm not going to use this for my ends. The other nice thing about plasticine is once I finish using these, I can just pull off any excess silicone and then reuse this over and over again. I got this at a art and craft store. My next step will be to mix up my two-part silicone and then pour it. In the silicone, I'll leave a description down below. There's a place on the way up to where my parents live in the city of Seal Beach that specializes in all kinds of silicone. And I'll leave a link for that down below. They are close enough to Disneyland and Hollywood and you know they make a lot of molds for things so when i walked into their shop there are not only just examples of what you can do with silicone molds like all these monster masks and models of all sort really interesting to walk in there but i noticed that their clientele is a lot of hollywood and disney so they use this stuff too okay so Pretty straightforward. Again, these, I can feel it. You have to make sure that you have a design that you're going to make an impression of that has enough substance to it so that you can feel it. And thus, the silicone will take an impression of it. Okay, next step is to show you how I mix up my silicone. So I wanted to show you by looking at this view that I didn't make these full hexagons right dead center. I had it a little bit off center and I think design wise it'll make it a little more interesting than to make it totally symmetrical. The other thing I want to show you is that these letters that have um, sales information on it, you know, maximum load that I can put inside this bin are raised also, which means that the silicone will pick up this detail. But I'm not really too worried about that because once I make the impression on my soap and peel this impression mat away from the soap, I'm going to take some just regular bubble wrap and just kind of push it into those areas to contribute to the design, but also to hide this lettering. So this is the silicone base that I'm using. So you'll know what to order if you want to do the same thing. And you need to go with that, the catalyst. And it's deep in, in this case, the color green. And it's important to shake that up because some of that dye is down below. This is important because when you mix this with the base, you want to make sure that everything's mixed well and it becomes one uniform green. And I'm going to show you that in a moment. But there's the catalyst. And I need one-tenth of what I'm going to be using for the base. So the math in this is really easy because you're going to calculate how much you need to mix. So I put um, 2.5 ounces of the base in there. And the math is easy because it's based on tens. So I'm just going to uh, move the decimal over just one space. So I'm going to add 0.25 instead of... 2.5 of the base. Perfect. I'm going to move this near my project. So I'll show you what I mean about the dye telling you how well you've mixed everything together. You can see right now the stripes, it looks like malachite. You can tell that the green isn't totally mixed in yet. Now it's becoming one color. 
that's what you want. It's like frosting. And you have some time to work with this. I think I have about an hour before it sets up. There's not very much of this because I don't need very much. Okay, so now I'm gonna just get this into my mold that you see you saw me make. Notice it's gonna be very thin, but that's exactly what I want, and I don't want to waste this stuff. And I'll insert a little diagram of what you're doing mathematically to get your own amount for your project. Switching over to a spatula. Cleanup is really easy too. What I do is just let the silicone set up and once it sets up I can just peel the silicone off of my mixing bowl or container. I don't use this bowl for food anymore. And I'll let this set up overnight. So then the rest of you can frost a cake. You're just making this a uniform thickness. And turn this around. And with this thin amount, I'll be able to just get a lot of the bubbles out just by spreading it. You can see the bubbles pop right there as I spread it. We'll see how this turns out. I might have underestimated how much I needed for this, but I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I think that's good. And I still have some more I can scrape out of here. Since it's going to be sitting for quite a while, at least an hour, it'll give it a chance to level off on its own. But I'm going to get it as flat as I can. This amount's going to be fine. Great that I don't waste any. If you mix too much, what I do is I have another little project right next to me so that I can pour and make another little mold of something. But I knew I'd be using at least all of what I mixed today. And I'm using a spatula made of silicone to scrape the silicone. I don't have to do this now, it's just kind of pleasing to see this collected on my spatula. Okay, that's about it. If I scrape any more, I'm going to be scraping the bowl off of the bowl. You can see it's kind of self-flattening that surface. I'm still going to tap it down. Feels like I'm making soap. And we'll let that set up overnight. We'll bring you back, show you how I unmold it. Okay, so this is my favorite part after all the work of mixing and making this little dam for the silicone. I think it's interesting that I can actually see the ridges. You can't feel them, but you can really see them, the ridges of the, the bumps on this uh, hexagonal texture. So I can just peel whole thing up. Then I'll remove the plasticine. It's amazing how well this picks up the smallest detail. Now remember this was an experiment so I hope it works out. I've never poured this so thin but it's pretty strong. It should work. And there it is. So what I'm going to do is trim this and I can use it as a mat to put texture on top of my soap or on the bottom. Um, I want to show you one thing is that you can see the lettering that was on the actual crate. 
but I have plans for that. I knew that was going to happen. What I'm going to do is once I pull this up, the soap, I'm going to push some bubble wrap in those areas to add a little bit of distraction from those. But yeah, this is really thin and you can see light through it, I think. Let me hold it up to the light. So it worked out well. And again, I can reuse the plasticine. It's not the cheapest stuff in the world if you especially buy a bunch of it to make a bigger project. But the nice thing is that it can be reused because it never gets hard. So it makes a really good way to keep the silicone into a project. I did that with my Voodoo soaps too. I think there's some other times that I've used that in some past videos. Um, I think I did that when I made my pineapple soap. So I'll have to do a search for that. Anyway, that's that part and I'll show you the trimming of the edges so it'll fit in my mold. So I've already used an X-Acto knife to cut a straight edge on one side of this. And I'm using a metal ruler. And um, if I even measure this to be a three and a quarter width, it will be perfect because the mold is a little bit larger than that. So let me mark that. Mark the other end. I line those up and cut. That should be fine. And it's better to go slow when you cut this. It's a new blade. I think this is better than using scissors. Looks like a professional little mat there. So I'm only going to cut off a little bit of the ends just to tidy it up. It's slightly smaller than my mold as it is. Just so that it fits into the mold pretty well. This is, you know, quite a bit of work, but if you have time, you can make it work and just learn about a new material. And the nice thing about this is that um, it'll be part of a unique part of your soap because if you're making your own molds, they'll be one of a kind, at least for a short while before people start to want to do the same thing. But uh, there you go. And I will be showing you how I use this in a soap as well. It's going to be a honey soap. I'll show you how it'll fit on this. I could use it as a bottom mat. And it fits really nicely. But what I'm going to do is, after the soap is poured, I'm going to press this into the top. There it is, pretty flexible. I'm not going to test how flexible that is though, because these areas will be a little more weak. But, strong material. There you go.